Hello guys and welcome to this historical vlog and essentially if you're new to my channel what my channel is mainly about is sort of Warhammer 40,000 and wargaming and stuff like that and tactics and battle reports and all that sort of good stuff but I do um, do history videos every now and then and today's one is going to be about the Battle of Waterloo and I hope you guys enjoy it and if you do let me know and I'll try and do more sort of historical videos um, if you let me know in the comments. So uh, before we get into that, I also want to apologise if the audio quality isn't as good for this video. Uh, my current recording equipment is out of action, so I'm recording this on my phone, which tends to not have so good quality. But I'd rather get out a video to you than wait. Uh, anyway, before we dive into this video, I want to quickly clarify a point from my last historical vlog where I was talking about viewing things through the correct historical context. Now, 99% of people in that video were very good, and I got a lot of support and likes, and people generally like that video. But one or two people still managed to miss the point I was making in that video, um, and they failed to view any nuance, and they just completely seemed to misunderstand me. What that video was about was the fact that in 2016, we have our own standards of morals, and in the past, different cultures and times have had different standards of morals. My point was that you can't view people of the past with sort of the moral standard of today. You have to take into consideration the moral standard of the time. Now, what I wasn't saying was that made things that were horrible in the past that happened okay. I wasn't saying that made it okay. I was just saying that you had to take that into consideration. I was adding nuance. I wasn't saying it was okay. Uh, so I used the example of Dresden. Uh, and what I said in that video was that Dresden was the British bombing of a German city where lots of civilians died and that was horrible and that was not a good thing and that shouldn't be celebrated. What I said was at the time, during the Second World War, millions of people were dying on either side. It was a war of national survival for all, all sides. The Germans were bombing British cities, the British were bombing German cities, the Americans were firebombing Tokyo. and none of these things are great and should be celebrating i was just saying through the context of the time it's difficult to you know get on a moral high horse and condemn it as 21st century people when this war happened sort of getting on for 80 years ago that was my point i wasn't saying it was okay i was adding nuance also the other point i want to get and i will get into today's video i just needed to clear this up some people had a go at me for choosing British examples like Dresden, and I used one from the Peninsula War. The reason I chose those is simply because I study a lot of British history, so I knew a lot about them. Uh, I could have easily picked examples from other countries. Just because you didn't, I happened to be from the country I was making examples about, doesn't make my point invalid. So when you try and criticise someone, do try and engage with their argument. Don't pick on them because you don't like British people, which is what I felt those comments turned into. Anyway, let's dive into today's video. And what this video is about is who won the Battle of Waterloo, which at first may seem a ludicrous question. It seems so obvious, you know, but once you actually sort of look into this and the sort of historiography behind the battle, there's actually more of a debate there than you'd think. And essentially, this is the debate. Who won the Battle of Waterloo? Well, obviously not the French. I think everyone acknowledges that. The French definitely lost it. But there's been an on-running debate whether who won the battle, the British or the Prussians. And I think this whole debate is in essence ridiculous. It was an allied victory. You can't just go, well, the British won it, or well, the Prussians won it. It was an allied victory. It was a combined effort. If a football team wins a match, guys, you don't say, well, the striker won the match. You say, well, it was a combined effort. He couldn't have won it if he just walked out there on his own, could he? Um, and what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to talk through... Uh, the events of the battle, not in detail, uh, I can do that in detail if you want me to, but I'm going to talk in the general build-up of the battle and overall what factors contributed to the French defeat and ultimately I want to say why it was an Allied victory, not a British victory, not a Prussian victory, because both schools are ridiculous. People saying it was a British victory I think is just as ridiculous as saying it's a Prussian victory and vice versa. So, the Battle of Waterloo was fought between the French under Emperor Napoleon on one side and a coalition of allies on the other side. Britain and Prussia had assembled armies in Belgium and the Russians and Austrians were assembling massive land armies which were marching across the continent. Napoleon decided to strike the British and Prussians quickly and try and drive a wedge between them 
before turning on the Austrians and Russians. His aim was to knock the British and Prussians out of the war as quickly as possible by hitting them early. And essentially, he caught the British and Prussians with their trousers down. No one expected him to make a move this soon. When Napoleon struck Belgium, most of the British officers were at the Duchess of Richmond's ball. They didn't expect there to be him to be showing up for quite a while. And what this meant was that when Napoleon struck, the British and Prussians were separated. And when the armies began to mobilise and move in for the fight, the the French had the drop on them, meaning that the Prussians were on one side, the British were on the other, and the French were ready to strike at both of them and take them on individually before they could unite their forces. And what this essentially meant was that the British ended up fighting a few days before the Battle of Waterloo, which is the big famous battle of the nose, at a place called Quatre Bras, while the Prussians ended up taking on the French at a place called Ligny. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I am terrible at pronunciation, as you guys who follow my 40k channel will know. Anyway, Quatre Bras is so called because it means four arms, and I've got a map up there for you. That road that runs from south to north, as it shows on the map, the one that runs up the map, that is, that is the road which the French were taking to Brussels, the capital of Belgium. The road that runs across the map, dissecting it, that crossroads, the four arms of Quatre Bras, that is the one that the British and Prussians would have to use to get to each other. So what the French were doing was driving that wedge between the British and the Prussians. The British managed to fight the French to a standstill at Quatre Bras. The F British didn't win that battle, the French didn't win it, it was just uh, fought to a, st a standstill. The Prussians weren't so lucky. They were defeated and forced to retreat. Blücher, who was the pr uh, Prussian commander, was faced with a choice. He could retreat east towards Prussia, but instead he tried it, decided to retreat north which was a ballsy move that could easily have gone badly. His advisors were saying, you know, pre flee back to Prussia, defend our homeland, but no, he decided to go north to try and hook up with Wellington. Wellington, with Blücher now retreat having retreated, he had to retreat as well. He couldn't stay and fight the French on his own. So what he did was he retreated to a place called Waterloo, the famous battle site. Well, actually, technically, it's a, a ridge beyond Waterloo, but never mind. It's not going to get into technicalities. And decided to hold up there as it was a strong defensive position that he had seen before, and wait for Prussian support. Now, this is where the debate around who won the Battle of Waterloo comes in. Wellington stood and fought at Waterloo and held off the French there, and that's why people think the British won, because they fought the famous battle at Waterloo, and they beat the old guard and you know sent them back and advanced on the French, and of course the British won it. No, they didn't. Equally, the Prussians, having retreated to Werve, uh, they then decided to move and support Wellington and turn the right flank of the French. The French ended up committing tons of reserves. Uh, they committed the old guard and some regiments from... No, sorry, they committed the young guard to fight the Prussians, some regiments from the old guard and various other corps um, units. They, they sent them to face the Prussians. So some people have argued the Prussians have won it because they turned the French flank and, you know, had the breakthrough there. Neither could have happened without the other. Wellington would not have made a stand at the Ridge of Waterloo if he hadn't known the Prussians were coming to aid him. Equally, Blücher wouldn't have marched on the French if Wellington had simply run away. Both men knew that the other one was coming to help the other or making their stand there. It was reliant on trust between the Allies. It couldn't have happened either way. Napoleon had also sent, and this is an argument in favour of the Fr Prussians' contribution... 30,000 men from Grouchy's corps, who was a French marshal, out to pursue the Prussians. These men had took no part in the battle, because they were, you know, sent out east to pursue the Prussians. They didn't hook up. The Prussians also held up those key reserves of the French on the right flank. So, Wellington himself admitted the battle was a close-run thing. If Grouchy's corps and the reserves that the French had sent to try and hold off the Russians had been there... I have no doubt the result of battle would have at least been a draw at Waterloo, and at worst for the British, it would have been a French win. Equally, if Wellington had just run away and abandoned Blücher, I am, I am just as certain that if all the French forces could have turned on the Prussians, the Prussians wouldn't have stood a chance. Both armies 
the whole point of them was they were going to fight together and beat the French, and that's what happened. The British did their job by standing and fighting at Waterloo, holding the French off, be- dealing with most of their forces, beating the old guard, advancing on them. That was significant. The Prussians, they contributed as well. Bl- Grouchy's uh, corps was away, that was trying to pursue them, that contributed loads. Uh, they distracted the French, uh, they wasted the French reserves by the French being forced to send in the young guard and various other units to hold them off. And then they got that breakthrough and also turned on the French. Neither could have won without the other. It was an allied victory. So the very debate, is Waterloo a British or Prussian victory, is kind of ridiculous. It wasn't a British victory. It wasn't a Prussian victory. It was an allied victory. The other thing I'd like to mention as well is the British forces under Wellington weren't just British. Uh, There were forces from other nations making up. The Dutch, the Belgians, Hanoverian troops, and also the forces of the King's German Legion, who were German uh, troops who fought for Britain. You know, this is very much a coalition of nations. Austria and Russia were also um, marshalling armies. They just hadn't got there in time. So, oh, the British won the Battle of Waterloo, or, oh, the Prussians won the Battle of Waterloo. Shut up. No, it was an allied victory, and uh, that's the sort of bottom line to take from this. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've enjoyed this video, do comment below and let me know, and if you guys really want to see more historical videos, I will try to do more of them, Uh, and if not, I will stick to my uh, usual remit of 40k. If you've enjoyed it, do get a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye for now.